the downloads. If anybody comes in late, you are more than welcome to share this link again, or if you want to share it to uh, share it with coworkers, you're welcome to do that too. I'll leave this up. The link will go out for the recording later today. Okay, uh, so if you click the link, you're going to get some downloads. Okay, that actually didn't work. Okay, um, let me know if that didn't work for you. I can fix that quickly. Uh, let me check. If that didn't work, put this one in the in the chat. Okay, <laughs> okay. Well, let me know if that one worked. Uh, and if not, I know what to do. Oh, I see what's going on here. All right. Yeah. One second, everybody. There looks like there's some kind of a issue with how this was shared. Okay. I'll be here. Let me just quickly. Okay. Okay. Settings. Okay. Okay, go ahead and try that first link. Up, oh, one second. Sorry, thought I had this set up. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead and uh, try that link again if you could. The first one would work fine. Okay, let me share my screen again. Okay. Cool. Okay, so if you share the first one or click the first one, that should download. Let's head to our downloads. And you'll just need to extract it. Okay, and we have our workbooks here. And I'm gonna share my slides and then we'll dive into the files. You're welcome to use the chat. Thank you, Heather, for letting me know. Welcome to everybody else who's tuning in. We are recording and if you need the files, just give me a shout. I'll share that link again. This first one that I shared in the chat should be working now. So uh, thanks for your patience with that. Okay. My name is George Mount. I'm the founder of StringFest Analytics. I do data analytics, training, and consulting, mainly with Excel. I help people operate as data scientists, data analysts, and data engineers through Excel without expensive IT delays or software purchases. There's more that you can do with Excel than you think. I'm a Microsoft Excel MVP, which means that I've exhibited technical or community leadership and excellence uh, in this field. I'm the author of Modern Data Analytics in Excel and Advancing into Analytics, both with O'Reilly Media. Those would be some good resources to check out after today. I'm also the instructor of a couple of courses on AI for Excel at LinkedIn Learning. So that would be a good thing to check out later as well. I'd love to hear more about what you do with Excel, where you're tuning in from in the chat. Uh, and we're going to talk about Copilot. I'm sorry, we're going to talk about not Copilot. We're going to talk about other things that you can do in Excel with AI besides Copilot. So obviously, Copilot is kind of the darling of everyone, Microsoft these days. A lot of cool stuff you can do with it. However, in a lot of environments, Copilot isn't available. Maybe you're waiting for that purchase order or you're still figuring out the security implications, which are beyond the scope of today, uh, we're going to look at some things that are already available inside of Excel right now that you can use. No Copilot comes with most versions of Excel that you all are probably working with. Now we're going to start with the basic basics, okay? Flash fill. It's been around for a long time, and it seems pretty straightforward, but it actually is a form of AI, and it can really tell you a lot about how AI works and how to get the most out of AI. We're gonna move into reading data in from a picture, which has been around for a while. Uh, the idea of reading data in from a picture has been around since like the seventies, but you can do it fairly easily in Excel. And that's just another quick, easy win with AI. And then we're gonna get more into getting recommended insights and AI powered data analysis using recommended pivot tables and pivot charts. From there, it's a really quick leap over into Copilot and generative AI. Although based on the amount of time we have, we might 
look at one stop over a really important point on how do we structure our data and put it in a format that's going to work well with AI, whether it's Copilot, ChatGPT, or whatever system you're using for your generative AI. You should really understand how to structure this data and make it machine readable as it were. So if there are any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. I do have everybody muted. Uh, your cameras are off just to keep the uh, environment you know, secure here. But if you do want to come off and ask a question, uh, you're welcome to do that. But the chat's probably the first place to uh, to start. OK, so we're going to move right into the files and the download this time is going to be this AI for Excel 101. You're going to see I have some some notes and resources available over here. A lot of these are taken from my blog. So if you're not subscribed to my blog, if you don't check it out, I definitely encourage you to do so. That's really the first place that I tend to put a lot of this content together uh, and then it gets repurposed into these other formats. So you can take a look at that document. We're going to go ahead and open this AI for Excel 101 workbook and we're going to start with flash fill, which a lot of you have probably used before, but maybe maybe you never really considered an AI or really thought about it as AI. Let me get back to the uh, workbook there. Okay. Cool. All right. So Heather was able to download it. Good. Yeah, I just had the workbook set to private, so that's why I didn't download it first. OK, so what we're going to do here is. Do what's called pattern recognition. So the idea is that we're going to have some kind of input, right? They could be text, could be dates, could be numbers, doesn't really matter. Uh, and we want to provide examples and then AI is going to learn from those examples and extrapolate over time and more data and ideally get better with more data. And that's really AI in a nutshell, right? This is really what we're doing here. So you can even see the wheels start turning here. So I type in John here, okay? So I want the first name. And if I want Jane, I'm gonna start typing and you'll see that it, it learns pretty quickly, but it does take a couple of steps. So even this first example here, now it's easy to really miss it because you're typing so quickly, but the first step here, AI is kind of assuming that you want John in every entry, right? That's not the case. That's not what you want, but that's all it knows. It's AI is pretty, pretty stupid, right? With not large data sets. So with a sample of one, AI really does think that everything I want here is John, okay? And it's really not very responsive in terms of actually giving us that first name. So let's go ahead and type in Jane. And if you don't see them autofill, there is a way to trigger that. It looks like I've kind of manipulated this data so many times that it doesn't want to give me the flash fill anymore. Uh, if you're seeing that happen, what you can do is let's select these cells. I have John and Jane. I want to just fill this down into a flash fill. Let's head over to data uh, and we're going to go to flash fill over here. Control E is the keyboard shortcut for that. So again, if you don't see, okay, we looked at our data. We don't see a pattern that I think if I select down here. Okay, that's interesting. All right, so let's try this again. It looks like I just confused AI. Oh, there we go. Okay. So that's what I was hoping to see. Okay. If you don't see it, you may need to just clear out and, and you know, refresh as it were. Let's hit enter. And that's what we see here. Now you do see flash fill available here, right? And if you like this, you can suggest it, accept it. If you don't like it, you can undo it. Let's see what happens if I undo these and let's go back up here to data and flash fill. Now it should. OK, I don't know why. Let's try a couple more examples down here. So if I wanted the date, right, I would just start typing 2023, 2022. It's accepting my thoughts. OK, let's see what happens if I select these and flash fill. OK, it doesn't seem to like that today, but that's OK. Using enter and hopefully you all are seeing that yourself. OK, but that's really what we're doing here, right? So I type 2023. Now this time it suspects that I want the date. It's a little smarter apparently when it works with dates, but we are able to fill those in, get the dates quickly enough. Control E being your keyboard shortcut. When it decides to work, 
beauty of live demos here. Let's get the last four digits of a credit card number here. 5432, 5678, and that continues to generate. Now, you know, as to why in this example, it thought, okay, everything's going to be John, but down here, okay, I'm gonna automatically assume you want the last four. It's kind of the mysteries of AI, right? There's a lot of trial and error involved. You're gonna see even in different ways to do this in Excel, because we're gonna talk about the alternatives for pattern recognition. Some methods are just gonna work better than some others for different uh, source, sources of data. So in this case, right, with names, we did need to at least give it a couple of examples. With dates, it looks like it just kind of automatically worked. Okay, and you know, why is that? Well, you know, you'd really have to go into the algorithm and oftentimes those algorithms are very hard to interpret, very hard to explain. Even the people who wrote them and designed them have a hard time really explaining why they're working. Okay, such as the pros and cons of working with AI algorithms. Okay, uh, so that's flash fill in a nutshell. Uh, if you are having issues with it, I would suggest, again, going up here to data, flash fill. You can also go over to file. And if you had to options all the way down here at the bottom, uh, you can go to advanced. Okay. And then under editing options, uh, there is one that says automatically flash fill. So make sure that that's turned on if it's not. And that should just trigger. As we saw before, it can be a little finicky your your flash fill options there cool okay so true to its name flash fill is good in a pinch what we're not getting here are any kind of repeatable workflows for adding more names for example let's say that next week's report comes in and we have more names we have different names this is really just an ad hoc one and done in a pinch solution so if you want something that is more robust and scalable that is actually going to generate some kind of syntax that you can use week after week because as you're seeing here right there's really no way if i were to add another name here right even if let's just add a pretty typical name it's still not going to complete well i guess it will now because i have it added but you get my point there's nothing that if i were to add another number down here right this doesn't know like hey i need to add more data here so flash fill is the easiest one uh there's also a column from examples in power query i'm not going to get that to that today uh, if you want to check out my LinkedIn learning course on AI powered Excel, I do show you how to do that. Uh, and then there's also one called formula by example in Excel online. Uh, that's going to work in your worksheet. So we don't need to go off to power query. Some of you may have attended my power query training sessions and you saw that it's kind of an external pop up kind of a tool that uh, uses its own rules, loads its data back into Excel. So we in a way have to go outside of Excel to get that to work. Right here, if you do need to be online with versions of Excel, but this will work very similarly where it will suggest a formula that then you could use. So for example, if let's say I wanted to make these all uppercase, it will generate some kind of a formula that is easily auditable and addable so that if I do have more data, it will instantly apply to that. So those are really the pros and cons of flash fill. All right, that's the first one. And again, maybe you've never really thought about flash fill as AI, but it is indeed what's called a form of pattern recognition. It's a very narrow scope, right? It's not quite like generative AI in that it's can work with all different sorts of data, text images, and uh, there's really no way to interact with this, right? And kind of chain a series of prompts together. So a lot more limited in its scope, but uh, in my opinion, really understanding how these algorithms work and, and starting with really basic ones and moving on and on to more advanced is a great way to understand how this stuff works. Okay, now if there are any questions, please do let me know in the chat. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and move on to importing an image into Excel. Uh, so this is what's called, I'm gonna go ahead and just open a new sheet here. Actually, it looks like I have a new sheet here already called data from image. So if you're following along and just for anybody who happen to come in late. I'm going to put this 
in the chat again, the resources. So this is called OCR or optical uh, character recognition. And this has really been around for a while. The idea is what it sounds like. We are going to have the computer see, right? Another bigger area of this is called computer vision. We want the computer to be able to see from an image. So I know that I've been in a position where for some reason there's a business that has been keeping its records on paper. Maybe they had a fire, who knows why, but all of the things that they gave us to evaluate were paper copies, right? And that's really hard. That could have taken weeks, maybe more to try to manually enter that data in. And that introduces a lot of errors right? A lot of room for error. So how can we use the computer to eliminate a lot of that process for us and probably be more accurate, although not perfect? We can use OCR. We can do this in Excel with optical character recognition. We're going to do this with data uh, from image here. So we're going to go over here to data. We're going to go into from picture. Okay, we're going to read in a picture from a file. Okay, you're going to need to find wherever your resources are. I'm in the downloads folder here. We'll drill down a couple more and you'll see this one scanned reviews. Okay, so if I were to, let's try to preview this over here. So you'll see this is indeed a scanned page of customer reviews. Maybe people wrote these down or something. This is typed. It's a lot easier to read typed text, especially versus my handwriting. but. I'm sure we've all been in a position where for whatever reason, the only way we can get to a data source is via the printed page. Let's see how Excel can help us out with this. So I'm going to go ahead and insert this. Okay, so it's going to take some time. It's going to read in the data. All right, and now it's going to suggest, again, this is just a suggestion. If it knew that it was wrong, it would just fix itself, right? It is just suggesting, hey, I think there are some places where there, there are some errors here. So for example, I'm going to go to this first one. Here is that part of the text. Now it looks like the error, in my opinion, is this first place where it's using the number one instead of I. Another thing, yours might be a little different, and that is another important factor to consider when we're getting into AI and using these algorithms. There is some uncertainty involved, so it's not always going to give you the same thing each time. It's not like writing a formula where you're guaranteed with the same inputs to get the same outputs. There's some statistically likely probabilities and things like that involved here. So this looks like a one. I'm going to change that to an I. We could continue. It's a little hard to read this, unfortunately, but uh, you could you know, continue to scroll here. And it looks like maybe I saw another one where they were using uh, an I for one, maybe not. Once you're done with this, we're gonna go ahead and accept this, okay? And you can continue on with this. Now, again, it's not gonna be perfect. So depending on how precise you need to be, right? If these were going up on a customer website and other people were gonna read them, yes, you probably want them perfect. If you're just using this for the purposes of some kind of a training or model building or something, yeah, there might be some room for error. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as it's within that margin of error, so to speak, it's probably fine. So really just depends on what you're planning to use with this data. I'm gonna go ahead and just insert all of this. It says, okay, eight of these still require a view. You are responsible for validating the accuracy of all data. Yes, good reminder when we're working with AI. It's really on us to make sure that what we're doing makes sense, is ethical, is uh, not garbage in, garbage out, right? So let's go ahead and just insert this. And you'll see that this gets added to my worksheet here. Okay, it's pretty good. You'll see for some reason, some of these spill over into another column. So if you wanted to fix that, it looks like maybe this should all be one column or one cell. So depending on what you're trying to do, you may need to manually adjust this. One thing I would also encourage you to do is just run it through another spell check. We can do that up here under a view and just check for any issues in spelling there. Because again, this uh, feature is not perfect. It, it may overlook some things that 
this feature over here, the basic spell check might might fix and find. So uh, just a suggestion there, but pretty cool. And then from there, we can do all sorts of cool things. You know, this is a newer feature in Excel, uh, and this actually does require Copilot. But now with Copilot, we do have the ability to do things like sentiment analysis. So understanding are these positive reviews? Are they negative? Does there seem to be a pattern in terms of phrases that people are using? Or if it's a really long review, what does it happen to be about? Are there certain topics that are coming up over time? So all those things we can do now uh, in Excel, that is going to take Copilot. So again, OCR is still pretty narrow in its scope. It's more just a straight up task, like get my data from A to B. It's not necessarily so much about OK, help me tell a story with this data, analyze it and understand it. But again, it's good to start somewhere and this could definitely save you a lot of time so that you are in a better position to analyze, make sense and explore your data. OK, so that is the picture from image. Now let's go ahead and move into recommended pivot tables and charts. OK, we're making pretty good time, so I'm guessing we probably are going to have time to look at reshaping data and using analyzed data as well, which is going to get you in a really good spot to use Copilot. All right, so let's head over to recommend, rendered, recommended pivot tables. So we have some data here. This is vehicle mileage. First thing I'm going to start to suggest to you just to get you in the habit right now is put this data in a table. Now, not everything you do with AI for Excel requires your data to be in a table, but by and large, it's going to make your life easier. It's going to let you work with things like Power Query for data cleaning. It's going to let you work with Power Automate for data automation. It's going to let you work with things like Python for advanced analysis. So there are a lot of advantages to putting your data in a table. And in general, AI is just going to be able to interpret this because it's a much more structured way to store and work with your data. So if you haven't done this before, just put your data anywhere, or sorry, put your mouse anywhere in this data set. We're going to head over to Control and T on our keyboard. We'll enter that. My data does have headers. OK, so make sure this is turned on. That's going to be really important that we have well-labeled headers. If we don't explain what our data is, it's less likely we're going to get good results from our AI, right? So make sure our data has headers. Make sure that we're picking up all the data. And the nice thing, once I click OK, a lot of benefits to tables. I've done some training on tables. You can also check out the first chapter of my book, Modern Data Analytics in Excel, uh, to learn more. But the really nice thing here is that if, for whatever reason, I were to add more data, this is going to automatically expand, means less room for error in terms of any downstream analyses, that we're making sure that our cell references are stable, that they're not going to be incomplete in terms of data being moved around, added to, adjusted in any way. OK, so this isn't necessarily needed for recommended pivot tables, but I would encourage you with any kind of data analysis that you're doing or just any data in general that is used for storage, right? That this is our source input data. Uh, start sorting it in a table or sort it, sourcing it uh, in a table and uh, you'll see a lot of benefits there. So let's head to insert recommended pivot tables okay now if you've used a pivot table before that's a good idea you probably have coworkers who may be rusty or just getting started with them and maybe that's your case too so what's really nice about a lot of these ai tools is that if you think about it not necessarily as just doing your job for you but helping you do your job then you'll get a lot of advantages for example maybe you insert this pivot table and you know how to insert it but once you get there, you just get that fear of the blank page and you don't know where do I go? What insights might there be? What am I supposed to do next? So it's really nice. And maybe even if you're an experienced Excel user, this could still be a win because this is going to just generate some quick, easy recommendations for you to get started. Now, remember, I'm going to hit recommended pivot tables and what you see on my screen might be completely different than what you see. That is just the nature of these probabilistic AI powered tools. So let's go ahead and click recommended pivot tables. We do have our source here as table one. That's a nice benefit in that we know that if this data were to change in any way, again, in terms of added rows, columns, et cetera, that this is going to dynamically respond. 
Okay, I'll click check, just confirm that that's what I want. And now we're gonna see some recommendations about how to slice and dice and understand this pivot table. Some of these might make more sense than others. And some of them, again, you might be seeing different things than myself. Um, so this one breaks down the weight by origin and model year. You know, that might be interesting to kind of track the trends by category. That seems like an important factor. Uh, really, probably the most important variable here, or at least the one that we're probably trying to assess any kind of effect on, right, or maybe even build predictions on, would be the miles per gallon and that mileage. That's his first one. So I'm going to look for one that actually includes mileage here. And that is the second one, it looks like. It gives us weight and miles per gallon by cylinders. Okay, so that's interesting. Maybe we want to understand, is there a relationship between weight and miles per gallon? Does it vary across cylinders? Okay, I'm fine with that. I might want to slice and dice this more. Let's go ahead and insert this into a new worksheet. And you'll see this is pretty useful, but again, this is not perfect because what we have here is the sum of miles per gallon. Now that probably doesn't make a lot of sense to try to sum or aggregate this up across multiple records, does it? So we wanna make sure that we're comfortable enough with evaluating this and then making any course corrections as it were in this data. So I wanna make sure that I know enough about pivot tables. So as you're planning your skills into the future with Excel, Copilot and so forth, I would say that knowing tables and pivot tables are really going to be important. Uh, I know there are a lot of uh, arguments online now that uh, there's these new functions called pivot by and group by in Excel, and they are really cool and you can do a lot of stuff with them. Maybe I'll do another session on them later, but the idea is that you can actually write functions in Excel that give you basically pivot table type output. That's great. They're not going to replace pivot tables, especially right now because Copilot really depends on them for its output. I don't really know why, but that's the way it is right now. So I would encourage you, don't think that pivot tables are dead just because there's these pivot by and group by functions in Excel. If you're using Copilot, if you're using AI, you definitely wanna make sure you can work with pivot tables, you're comfortable manipulate the, manipulating them and using them. So that is recommended pivot tables. And again, you could use this on any kind of table. Again, I would suggest you use it on a table. It doesn't have to be but you'll get some suggestions here. I can even get more down here. Again, some of these might be more useful than others. So this might just be interesting, you know, if you're trying to explore your data, understand what might be some good things to really drill into and learn more about. But then once you're ready to size it up, you can insert it into a new or existing sheet and just use your best judgment and analytical skills to make sense of that. Perfect, all right. Let's head over to the recommended charts now. I don't see a lot going on in the chat, that's okay. Hopefully everything's making sense. All right, so I have a very simple data set here. This is the recommended charts worksheet. Let's go ahead and insert, we're gonna go to recommended charts, okay? And you've probably used this before, I never thought of, this is another one, you probably never really thought of this as a form of AI, but, that's really what we're doing here. So we're giving it data. Excel is determining, okay, do we have dates here? Do we have categories? Do we have values? And it tries to determine based on the data that I'm being given, how big it is, what the data types are and so forth. What is the one that makes the most sense? So we do have a bar chart here. That makes sense to me. I'll go ahead and click okay. Let me go back over here though and insert, and this is an important thing to be aware of with a lot of these AI tools. So if I go to insert recommended charts, you're gonna see down here at the bottom, some of these really don't make a lot of sense. Okay, uh, let's, for example, if I say this line chart, I'll click okay. If you've studied any data visualization, you'll know what's wrong with this because for whatever reason, this is assuming that these are numbers, right? Uh, and, and they're really not, right? So maybe it thinks this is time one, time two, time three. No, that's not what they are. Let me go back here, insert recommended charts. There might be some other ones. Okay, it doesn't have a scatter plot in here. Sometimes you'll even see a scatter plot where it'll try to analyze the relationship between column one on the X axis and column two on the Y axis. But even in these cases, it's a little ambiguous. Our data is just not well 
labeled. So this is another thing to consider that a lot of the times uh, AI is going to just assume if you have a column of numbers that these are numbers that can be analyzed like some kind of a quantity and that maybe it wants to take the average of this or sum it in some way. They're not really numbers in the sense that we're not really looking to sum them in some way, right? We don't really care about averages. Maybe these are like, I don't know, wait times or customer reviews or something like that. We probably care about that. We probably want an average or some kind of uh, quantitative analysis on that. But these are really just categories. So uh, make sure as you're feeding these data sets into AI that you try at least to let the tools know, hey, these are these are just categories, right? This isn't really a quantity to be analyzed. Some ways that we could do this, now this takes a little more effort than other ways, but if we did something like you know, customer reviews, so adding labels is always a good win. Generally, the AI tools are smart enough to know, okay, when I see something like region, I probably don't really want to take something like average region. So even something like that is good. Even better if you were to do something like, you know, just make this text so it's really clear that we have, and I'm just putting these in, you can put whatever names you want, or you could even just put XYZ names in here if you're following along. I just have this in the demo sheet. And yes, I did get these names through generative AI. Uh, so even better is encoding these text categorical columns as text. So it's painstakingly clear that they're not numbers. So if I go over here back into recommended charts, you're going to see, okay, we don't have a line chart anymore, but now AI is getting even more crafty and clever, maybe beyond its good and suggesting maybe we should put a map in here, right? So if I insert this, now there's, I don't think really any places, there might be some place called Brookside and so forth, but uh, the maps, the map features of Excel are having a hard time finding it, right? It says map charts work best with, data such as states, provinces, countries, and regions. So you're out of luck here in trying to make this a map. Although it did suggest that this is a map. So you're seeing how just like very slight changes, the same data, a very small data set, just slight changes in how we're encoding the data and representing it can have a big impact on the kinds of graphs that are being suggested to us. So think about this as a, at a larger scale when we work, when we work with bigger data sets, when we're working with Copilot, uh, those same kinds of issues, you know, these Copilot and the GPT tools are more sophisticated, right, than this. This is pretty elementary AI, but you'll still run into these problems where having your data not really well explained in terms of what's text, what's call, or sorry, what's text, what's values, so on and so forth uh, could could lead you to some problems. All right, so that is everything for recommended uh, charts. All right, we're going to go on to one more thing here, and we're going to look at analyze data. Uh, I think this is another worksheet. So let's close out of AI for Excel. OK, we're going to move over into this bonus file called wholesale customers. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. I don't see any questions in the chat, but if you do have any questions, you're welcome to let me know. Thanks again for coming. Hope you're learning some stuff. And uh, I'm going to be sending out a feedback form at the end here in a little bit. So if you could stay on uh, for that, just to fill it out would help me a lot. And I'll talk more about that later. It's really the only thing I ask for uh, with these sessions is just to get good data, reviews, feedback for my business. That's it. Okay, uh, so we're back here on bonus wholesale customers. Again, first step here, let's think about inserting this as a table, control and T. My data does have headers. We're gonna click okay, all right? And I'm gonna try another AI powered feature here in Excel, which is called analyze data. Now you're even gonna see that analyze data, this is on the home tab. It's all the way over here and it's directly next to Copilot, which should tell you something about this tool. Now, analyze data, I like to think about as the precursor to Copilot. Now, it's not as sophisticated by any means. It's not going to help you build really advanced analyses using Python. It's not going to help you write formulas. It's not going to help you add conditional formatting or format your data set. 
but it is going to help you build some basic recommended charts and pivot tables. It's kind of like combining uh, the recommended pivot tables and recommended pivot charts, except we're adding another layer of sophistication on here, which is that we are going to be able to talk to our data basically using what's called natural language processing or querying is really what we're doing. So we are going to be writing a query. It's not necessarily like a prompt insofar as we don't really have the ability to have a conversation. We pretty much just ask a question, we're gonna get an answer and that's that. So it's really not as sophisticated as Copilot or ChatGPT, but it's getting there. So you wanna make sure if you just click on analyze data, it's gonna tell you to select a larger table. Okay, so let's do that. Make sure that your data is clicked inside of this data set, wholesale customers. Let's go to analyze data. It's gonna analyze your data and you'll see that this looks similar insofar as we're getting recommended pivot tables, we're getting recommended charts. Yours might be different than mine. Again, that usual disclaimer applies. If I go down here to, for example, the second one, we are having the issue that I talked about, right? Where region, this stuff is, categories, right? They're not numbers, but analyzed data doesn't know that. And it's trying to create a scatter plot comparing region number versus deli sales. Doesn't make a lot of sense. So this one probably out. This one, okay, comparing deli sales by channel and region, that might be helpful. So let's go ahead and insert this one. It's going to insert it as a pivot chart. Again, make sure that you're conversant and fluent in tables pivot charts and pivot tables because that is a lot of the output that copilot's going to be giving you let's go ahead and drill in here you see we get our pivot table we have our pivot chart over here we can make any adjustments that we want this is just like a regular chart and unfortunately again this doesn't have the ability to do things like remove our grid lines or change the title or things like that it really is just what you get is what you get. So you do wanna have some skills there to make those adjustments. But I'm not really digging a lot of these. So with that being said, we can start to ask our own questions about the data. One of them might be, for example, uh, just generate some insights for the fresh category. That sounds interesting to me. Let's go ahead and do that one. If you see something else, or if you wanna ask something else, you're welcome to do that. So let's click on this one. Sounds pretty vague. And the answers are rather conceptual, right? Uh, it looks like there's a strong relationship between Delhi and Fresh. Okay, there's a scatter plot. That's interesting. Region three accounts for the majority of the sales of the Fresh category. Okay, that's kind of cool. Channel one accounts for the majority of the Fresh sales. Okay, good to know. So it's really trying to break down this variable by other variables. Seems pretty useful depending on what you're trying to do. Really, you know, understand the breakdown of sales and what's influencing those sales in this particular category. So that's pretty cool. We're going to get a little more creative here and use our own questions. So maybe you just want to know, uh, you know, total sales for milk. And think how helpful this would be in a meeting, right? You're trying to analyze and ask and answer questions on the fly. You can just plug them right in here to analyze data and get those answers quickly. And again, we are gonna get this result back as a pivot table as we would in a lot of examples. Let's go back here. You can continue to ask lots of questions. I'm gonna ask one particular question that's probably gonna flummox Copilot. I'm sorry, flummox analyze data and might actually flummox Copilot too, which is what are total sales by region? Seems like a pretty easy question, right? something that we'd probably want to know. Let's go ahead and run that, and we're going to get some of regions. So something's not computing here. Something's not working. Let's insert a pivot table, see if we can figure this out, why this is happening. And it looks like analyzed data just took that region category. And again, it's treating the category number as an actual number to sum, which is already a problem. Okay, And it's not giving us the total sales. And the reason it's not giving us total sales is it doesn't know what column to sum here because we have sales in a bunch of different columns. So it's not smart enough to know, okay, fresh through Delhi are sales. You need to tell it that in some way. And the best way to tell it that is just to shape the data so that there is a sales column. 
So this is what's called like a pivoted or a nested uh, data set. And we want to, as you would guess, unmask or unpivot this. And we're gonna use Power Query to do that. So again, this is gonna be on our own labor to get the data into a machine readable format. You've already seen some other issues with these quantities being kind of encoded as, uh, I'm sorry, categories being encoded as quantities. Another very common issue is that our data is in this kind of nested or pivoted format. So we're gonna quickly do that, run into Power Query, and then we'll, we'll close for the day. So if you never used Power Query before, buckle up. I do have some other sessions on that. You are also invited and encouraged to check out my book, Modern Data Analytics in Excel, would be a good place to get started there too. So let's head up to data. We're gonna go to from table slash range. Make sure that you are selected into that analyze data data set right here, wholesale customers. Let's go ahead and insert. You're going to see that a second window pops up in your Excel session. Mine went over into my other window here. So I'm going to move it over here. And we're not going to spend a lot of time in here, but if you've never worked with this before. This is a tool for data cleaning first and foremost. You'll see that right up here on the home ribbon. A lot of these features have to do with choosing rows, removing rows, keeping rows, columns, et cetera, et cetera. Think of this as your data cleaning tool and your repeatable data cleaning tool. So if you have those kinds of workflows where Monday morning you log in and it's just boom, 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 delete this row, add this column and this value needs to change. And oh my gosh, I'm out next week. So this person needs to do it. I need to type up my notes and they're gonna probably call me when I'm on vacation. All those kinds of things that make your life miserable when it comes time to generate these reports, clean your data. You're going to use Power Query. You're going to save a lot of time and a lot of hassle because everything we do here is repeatable and easily reproducible. You can check out my book or check out my sessions or I do other corporate training for more, but let's do the basic workflow, this basic workflow with unpivoting, unnesting this data set. All right, now we're going to do this a little bit unintuitively. We are going to select channel and region, and we're going to unpivot all the other columns, okay? There's some benefits to that, not the least of which is it just prevents us from doing a lot more clicking. So let's have everybody click channel. We're going to hold down control. We're going to click region. That's all you got to do, okay? So again, click channel. If you've never been in Power Query, don't panic. Hold control, click region, okay? And now our goal is we want to Again, unnest, unpivot. We want to take all these columns and really melt them down into a sales column. So if you can just kind of imagine that in your mind's eye here, and let's see how it works. Right click, unpivot other columns. Done. Amazing. Okay. Attribute and value are the names that were given to that. Let me just do that one more time. If anybody didn't get that. Hold on channel, right click. I'm sorry, hold on channel, control, hold on region, right click, on pivot other columns. And let's call this uh, department. And I'm going to call this sales. Okay. Amazing. Good job. All right. Play everybody did that. One last call to see that again. Otherwise, I'm going to move on. Okay, I'm assuming you're good. Let's close and load. I'm going to close and load too. I'm going to close and load this to a table. Now yours probably defaults to a table. I set my options up a little differently. So make sure yours is closing and loading to a table. I don't need to add this to a data model. The data model is Power Pivot and DAX. That's for building reports, databases, and that really gets more into when you're working with multiple tables and you want to build a report on multiple tables. We don't need to do that right now. So just insert this into a table, click OK. OK, so our data is unnested, unpivoted. 
All right, and we're going to be in much better shape to work with analyze data now. So let's close out of analyze data. Gets a little weird if you continue a session using a different data set, it might refer back to the old data set. So just close out of analyze data. Let's go back home. Let's go to analyze data again. It's going to rework, go through the data set this time. And it even says the first one, right? Percentage of total sales for each department. That's basically what we want. I'm going to go ahead and say what are total sales by region. Actually, that's what we want in our department. And you'll see that now we get it, whereas we did not get that in the previous schema, as it were, of the data set. So again, AI is pretty smart and you will have these problems with Copilot. I've seen this happen a lot, right? Where people are asking questions, they're not getting great answers. And the reason is that their data is just not set up in a very machine readable format. And this is really the biggest culprit, right? Your data just not being in this unnested, unpivoted kind of format that we just did in a couple of clicks with Power Query. Awesome. Okay. So that's all the content we have time for today. Really want to appreciate everybody's time and attention. It was a quiet group today, but hopefully that means you're just hard at work learning this stuff. Thank you very much for coming. You're welcome to find me on LinkedIn. I post pretty frequently. You can connect over there. You can sign up to my newsletter. One other thing I'm going to share and I'm gonna stop recording in a second is this feedback form. So if you do have a couple minutes before you log off, I greatly appreciate any feedback you can share on what you like today, what you'd like to see more of. If there are any reviews that I can share in terms of marketing, just helps me out. Uh, I don't ask for money with these sessions. I don't, you know, it's not really worth trying to get donations or anything. You know, this is just a good way for me to share and give back to the community. But all I would ask for in return is uh, just reviews, data, feedback that I can use uh, for my business. So I'm going to stop recording and I'll send this recording out along with the files and this feedback form and some other stuff that might be of interest. I've got some other sessions coming up. Actually, let me do that really quickly before I close. Just so you know, it's on the calendar. Okay. Okay, let's come over here. All right. So uh, AI for Excel, we're going to actually, we are talking about Power Query next week. So if you're new to that, actually, I think that's in two weeks. We're going to look at Office Scripts. We're going to do more Power Query, Power Automate, more Power Query, get into Power Pivot. So really, I've basically just been going chapter by chapter through modern data analytics. That would be a good resource to read along with as you're going through these. But I've got some other stuff. So if you never heard about Office Scripts, if you never heard about Power Automate, this might be a good, easy chance to do so. And if you have other topics that you're interested in, let me know in that feedback form and I'll see what I can do. But thanks again for coming. Let me stop recording and I'll get all this info out to everybody shortly. Okay.